Hello everyone. Today I want to cover forms and form validations in Blazor. So traditionally we're using the regular forms for user to input data. And if we look at the contents of this, we have a form element and then we have input field and then a submit button. So when user clicks on the submit button, the forms will be posted back to the backend uh, to this location. But application written with Blazor is a single page application, which means only the first page load goes through the HTTP request and response pipeline. The subsequent actions will not be posted back to the backend. In order to still perform form submissions, Microsoft came up with a set of components to perform the task. So instead of using regular forms in Blazor, we should use the edit form component. <clears throat> and instead of using the regular input, uh, we should use input text, input number, input date, input select, etc. Don't worry about the, the error here. I'll fix this error later. When the uh, submit button is clicked, event handler specified, which is valid form submitted. <clears throat> And if you want to handle invalid form submitted, so then you would do on invalid form submitted and, uh, and connect it to a, a function. Right, so here's two things we need to know. First, we need to use an added form instead of a regular form. And then we use input fields differently. Another thing we need to know is in order to handle the submission, right, we specify a method. The next thing we need to know is that the edit form has to be bound to a model. I declared a model class here, person, and then I initialize the person right here. And then in edit form, there is a parameter that is called model, and I provide that person model instance. To this model and next I need to use bind value to do data binding and I'm associating each properties inside the person class to the input elements and the next thing we need to know is validations in order to validate the model we can use data annotations we need to first uh, use that namespace and then we can annotate the properties which uh, the annotation attributes like required, string length, max length, range. Uh, we can specify the data type like email address, etc. In order to trigger the validation and display the validation messages at the top, we need to use the data annotation validator component and also we need to put validation summary here and that's all we need to do for a basic validation scenario okay, so let's run this form and see what happens all right so if i don't do anything i click on submit button it will give me the required error messages if i put minus one here you click on this it would give me the range error message and emails is also still required if i put abc dot abc well, let's put this then it would directly say that email address is invalid right? so if i provide a correct email address format then this becomes screen and if i give it a correct number then all of everything is great okay. and the submission will trigger the uh, on will trigger the on valid submit event and this event handler will be triggered okay so that's the basic of validation uh i just wanted to before i finish this episode i wanted to mention a couple of things notice that this v is a capital v so usually when you use uh, a data binding outside 
of uh, added form, you would use a lowercase v. And if you keep using the lowercase v, uh, you will encounter very weird errors. So remember to use capital V here. Another thing is that if you put buttons here, like this, the buttons default type is going to be a submit button. Okay, so if you put buttons here and expecting it behaving like a regular button, it's not going to happen. It's going <coughs> to uh, work like a submit button. Okay, so if you want extra buttons um, to work just like a button, then you have to specify it as a button. And that's it. If you like my videos, please give it a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one. Thank you.